Hello, church family. My mind goes back to an old Clint Eastwood movie. And I don't remember the name of the movie, but I remember a movie where Clint Eastwood is a cop, Dirty Harry. It's one of the Ness series. And in the movie, he says, a man's got to know his limitations. Well, there may be some truth to that because this week I've been talking about lessons learned in my years of ministry and this is a lesson I should have learned in my years of ministry but and I know I should have learned it. I know it's a weakness in my life but I just never could get a handle on it. So we're going to talk about a few of the things that are you know, my weakness, one of them, and what I do about it. And in the process, I realize that I'm not alone. You've got some weaknesses in your life, too. I mean, some of us know it, and some of us label everything a weakness, and, and far too many of them, and we really aren't as weak as we think we are, but others are the other way around, and we don't know that we have weaknesses. We think we're pretty good at just about everything, and so uh, while I share with you one of my weaknesses, I'm also going to, um, we're going to talk about one of your weaknesses and help you identify it. But rather than be all negative and gloomy before I do that, and before I launch into sharing about myself this week, um, maybe we ought to talk about strengths, because I also have some strengths, and sometimes we, we have kind of a false humility about it, and we don't want to recognize that we're good at anything, and all of us are good at something. So are you. You've got some pretty outstanding strengths that the Lord wants to use. Uh, but let me ask you, what are you good at? I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's like playing a game or if it's in business or if it's on farming or, or if it's uh, with your family or if it's just something a hobby you like or, or if it's a personality trait that you like maybe you're you're patient or maybe you're inquisitive but what is it you're good at if you had to be honest just honestly asking you what do you think you're good at Well, I want to share with you, uh, as I said earlier, something that I haven't learned in my life very well. Before I do that, I, I, I do want to um, share something I like about myself. I, I mentioned to you earlier that um, there's good things about you and I, and there are weaknesses about you and I, and I want to share you, with you some of the things that I like about myself first. I... I'm a little bit on the ADHD side. <laughs> Pretty much anybody that knows me well knows that, and not very many people doubt that. Um, I usually joke about it all the time, and my wife was for many years a special ed teacher, and we would go places and uh, with other special ed teachers, uh, conventions or whatever they have, that kind of thing, and, and, and my wife would introduce me to them, and almost inevitably, the other special ed teachers would take a liking to me and say, I, I, we have a boy like you in our class. <laughs> I thought, okay. But I don't see that as a handicap. I, I know that I used to drive some of my teachers right up the wall, and they, they had a hard time getting me to pay attention to, to very much of anything. And, and in class, my mind would go off this way and off that one way. And I remember one time in school, uh, a teacher um, kind of barking at me in a, in a nice way, and she would say, Rob, you know, uh, quit building sandcastles in the sky, or quit building castles in the sky. Uh, I had never heard that phrase before, and I guess it meant I, I wasn't paying attention, I was daydreaming, but it caught on. And I thought to myself, that's interesting. And so I remember as a little kid the rest of that day building little castles with blocks and stuff in my mind. And I, I don't think that was what the teacher wanted. Um, but I actually do uh, have appreciated. I know that a lot of times my brain's not where my body is. And 
Uh, sometimes I think I know a lot of stuff, except I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm supposed to be or who I'm supposed to be with at any given time. And sometimes I have to have people point me in the right direction because my mind will go off and I'll forget stuff. But there are things I really like. And one of them is that the world is an adventure all the time. I'm seeing all sorts of things, and I, I like art, and I see colors and activities and nature and that other people sometimes don't see because I'm just always attracted to all that's going on around me. I also have this ability to um, hyper-focus uh, on things. I mean, ADHD isn't just um, a lack of attention and, focus, and, and not being able to focus, but sometimes I focus really focus like a laser beam on something and I haven't had to have much sleep over most of my life I do now I sleep quite a bit but when I was young boy uh, most of my family thought I was kind of strange because because I really didn't sleep that much I'd stay up late at night I'd get up early in the morning uh, my dad worked second shift when he got home at night he would uh, sit in a, a chair and watch TV for a little while before he went to bed. And I'd sneak out of bed and hide behind his chair and watch TV with him. And then my mother, she'd get up early and I would get to her the bedroom when I was just a little toddler. I would come into the bedroom while she was still asleep and she'd roll over and I'd just be standing there next to the bed staring at her. And in between those times, we had an oven that had a little light on. And I'd go to and turn that little light on in the oven so mom and dad wouldn't catch me. And I'd read during the night. And I just, I just hyper focused and I, I didn't, uh, just didn't seem to need to sleep a lot. And I was always kind of keyed up about something and, and learning something new. And, and one of the things I liked about that was that I think that probably I was, um, into more hobbies than the average person was. I mean, just jump from thing to thing to thing. And I think that whenever I was in a ho into a hobby, I, I focused a little more tightly and I, I, I maybe was a little better at some of them than a lot of people are. Maybe uh, at least average, maybe a little better than average at, at several of the hobbies. And so people that knew my, you know, know me from a distance, they would say, oh, he's really into classical guitar, he's, he's into motorcycles, oh, he's into camping, he's into nature, he's into photography, he's into astronomy. And my, my family would just kind of roll their eyes and say, no, he's just on another kick. He'll get over it, he'll get bored. Um, and and I sort of I sort of like those things about myself. It's, it's part of who I am, and, and I don't see it as a, as a detriment. Although, when I talk about things I've never learned, this ADHD kind of plays into that too. Sometimes I hyper-focus too much, take it to extremes, and don't know my boundaries. When I was in college, sometimes I would, um, well, one semester when I was at Greenville University, some of my friends watched me and they, and my wife watched me and they, they told me that they were pretty sure that I'd gone a whole semester with um, only one or two nights of over three hours sleep. And there were some weeks that there were a couple of nights during the week I just didn't lay down at all because I just was busy doing stuff and focused. And I, I think I first noticed that when I was a kid and I was into radios and electronics. I mean, you know, I was always into some kind of a kick. And I got the parts to build a radio, and so I was soldering and reading the schematics. And, and I, remember, um, I remember as a kid, I must have been like middle school or maybe junior high when I was doing this. And I'm, I'm reading this schematic and trying to figure out how to put these parts together. And as I'm doing it, this hand is just doing its own sort of thing. And I literally, I had one of these um, long pin type uh, welding irons that I would you know, soldering irons that I would solder my parts on and stuff. And, and my, my hand just was over here to pay his attention. And I picked up that soldering iron by the blade when it was plugged in and didn't feel it because I was so focused. And I looked down at my hand and I, I thought, okay, <laughs> you know, let go. 
And, and for years I had a scar across my hand where that thing burned me. Uh, there were some drawbacks. Another drawback about it is uh, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. I was in my early 20s in college and I was pastoring a church. I was uh, working at maintenance of a college and I was pastoring a church and I was going to school full time and doing a lot of things. And I remember one time I was visiting this uh, person from my church that was in the hospital. And, and as we were talking, there was another person there that was, um, they were both older people, retired age, and there's another person visiting them. And, and the nurse came in and the nurse took her blood pressure and said, oh, it was a little high. And, and the other person visiting, I, I remember this, I was probably 20, 21 maybe. The other person there said, oh, I'm probably higher. And they, you know, got their blood pressure checked. And, and I thought, okay, I'll play along. You know, I'm pastor, I'll play along. And they checked my blood pressure and everybody got real quiet. And it was like 180 over 110 or 15 or something. Um, and I ended up most of my life on blood pressure medicine. I remember once I was just pushed at the edge when I was in college and I was getting close to the end. And I was coming back from a, um, coming back from going out for pizza. A couple of friends of mine uh, Scott and Kevin were driving and my wife Sue and I were in the back seat and on the way home from the pizza place I was a little teary. I, I wasn't really boohooing or anything, but I was kind of sniffling in the back seat and kind of teary and and they could tell something was wrong and they, they were saying, Rob, what's wrong? And I said, this is kind of embarrassing, but I said, um, that, that, that coyote never gets that road runner. <laughs> They were all like, Rob, we think we better go put you to bed. I had one final in college that I just, um, I was giving a final speech for a class and I stood up to give my speech and I turned around, looked at everybody and I, I started to talk about my speech and then I said, you know, I, I really, I'm going on a fishing trip this afternoon. I'd really rather be there than here. In fact, I think I'm going to go. And I just walked out of class without doing my final Still got a good grade for the class. But that's been an unfortunate pattern, is that I don't seem to have the brain to know when to slow down. And there have been a couple of big falls I've taken, partially contributing to it, that I just ran myself 24-7 with no margins burn the candle at both ends and in the middle. And it's not wise, it's not godly. And I never could quite seem to handle it. I would uh, have one crash and then just kind of wind up slowly over a period of time. And a few things I did learn about it, um, I don't know if they're very helpful, but I did learn that um, I have limits. I did learn as I got older and put myself through enough misery that I just have to say no sometimes. I, I did learn that I can't trust myself, but I can trust my wife. And whenever I start to get myself too wired, she, um, she pretty much tells me to slow down and drop stuff. And when she says that, I, I know it. I wrote in my you know, Proverbs for, Proverbs for Pastors. I don't know how old I was when I wrote this one, but it was after one time when I had myself just about as stretched out as possible. Um, I wrote to myself, to Rob, um, everyone has limits, even you. Erect some boundaries. <laughs> I'm still not real good at it, but I'm better than I was. And maybe just because I'm older now, I'm slower than I was. And, and I'm older now, I can't stay awake even if I want to. I keep falling asleep. Well, if you tend to um, think you're a superhuman or something and burn the candle at both ends and do like me, it's not a godly thing. 
It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do anybody any good. I remember one time um, trying to lay out the four Gospels in a chronological sequence and, and uh, kind of use some books and, and realize that Jesus went into Gentile country, you know, like every year or so for a little while. And then I thought to myself, I wonder if Jesus is giving himself a sabbatical. He just kind of is stepping out of ministry. Of course, he's still involved with it. And, and often he stays out in the desert places and in the, in the quiet places. And often we see him in the quiet of the night communing with his heavenly father. And, and Jesus probably would understand boundaries, even though he was just pushed to the edge. Okay, <clears throat> while I talk about this, I want to talk about something else too. I told you as I, as I gave the introduction to my devotions for today that I wanted to help you find your weak spots. Okay, I know that you have strengths and I know that you have weaknesses. And if you think you don't have weaknesses, probably you're only fooling yourself. Pretty much my friends see my weaknesses. I just don't always see them. I need my friends sometimes to tell me about them. Or, so, so let me help you with some weaknesses. Because you may not have the same areas that I am. You may not be a little bit ADHD. My son Jeremy once said, Dad, you obsess more than any, you know, can obsess better than any person I've ever met. Because I get obsessive about this game or that game or hobby or whatever I'm doing. You may not have that problem. You might sleep really well. But you do have weaknesses. So if you remember a few moments ago when I first introduced what I was going to talk about and I asked you what your strengths are, let me tell you now that at least some of your weaknesses are your strengths taken to extreme. That's what a lot of our weaknesses are. If I could get by with a little bit less sleep, if I could uh, enjoy throwing myself into something and focusing on something without going crazy about it. It's a strength. When I start to go overboard, it's a damaging weakness. I don't see it in myself because some of the things that I like about myself are the things that make me fall flat on my face. And unless you are very attuned to who you are, there's a good chance that you don't know all of your weaknesses. Actually, there's a good chance that the things you think you're good at are some of the areas that you've taken to extremes and are not good at. Now, the trick isn't just to drop them all out of our lives. The trick is balance. The trick is having others around us to help us with them. The trick is spending time in prayer. The trick is, as we grow older and as we mature, learning to be honest with ourselves and recognizing that um, a little bit is fine. Too much is bad for everyone. Well, I don't know exactly where your weakness is, but by now, you probably know where your weakness is. And I'd suggest you don't just leave it there. In the end, it can cause a lot of damage. Don't just ignore it and don't just pretend that it's not so bad. But commit it to the Lord. Be realistic. See your strength as it is. See your weaknesses as they are. And if you are fortunate enough like I to have my wife, to have someone that you can trust, that you can allow to speak into your life some harsh words from time to time and take them seriously, then um, you'll be better off.